Hello, I'm Scott with Shop Photography, and today I'm going to go over the Godox AR400. Here we have the Godox AR400 in the box. Let's open this guy up. What we get inside is the battery. Of course, we have a front diffuser, the flash itself. The mounting bracket, the power charger, which is the same as the um, 360 power packs, so that's nice to have an extra. And of course, we have the umbrella bracket. Let's move these off the side, and let's put this guy together here. Got a little foam there. Let's slide this in. So this just slides right on in. Clips in. And it's ready to go. Let's turn the power on. This uh, unit has uh, three intensities of modeling light. So we'll turn it on. There's one. There's two. And there's three. back off. Again, if we look at the back, all functions are pretty much exactly the same as the 360 or the 180. It has all the same button configurations. And as well, you will use the um, TX or TR uh, receiver or the FT16 receiver. And of course, you can use your uh, TX or your F16 transmitter. Um, or you can use the sync cable. On the side here, we have your sync cables and your USB connector. So, put our USB in here. This unit weighs about just shy over three pounds. It's a little heavy compared to other ring flashes like my Ellen Chrome or my Jim Buy or my Pro Photo because basically you have the whole system all in one little unit. So that's the reason why it weighs so much. Um, if you can handle the weight, um, you're good to go. Um, let's go over here. Just set this guy off to the side. <clears throat> What I like about this um, bracket here, that your mounting bracket, is that it folds up. So actually, you can actually tilt it to wherever you want. Like, here's a standard one. It's solid. Uh, storing this and putting this in your uh, case comes a kind of a hassle because, I mean, it doesn't lay in any flat form where this actually just flattens down and nice and compact. Here you can see I have an actual uh, spigot onto this one and the reason why <clears throat> I have the spigot on this is because I actually um, I don't use a ring flash usually as a main light um, or because a lot of the models get headaches from these um, because the light is straight on. Uh, what's nice about this is it does have the modeling light so it actually um, gets rid of the big irises where, um, like the Ellen Chrome and the Jim Bai do not have the modeling light built into it. Um, and what I do is I set me up an umbrella bracket and I actually mount this guy right on here and it mounts the ring flash right dead center. And what that does is it perfectly illuminates any umbrella, parabolics, uh, deep octas, anything like that. It perfectly illuminates the center. I mean, you get even light pretty much throughout the whole thing. Here we have the diffuser cap that comes with the unit. Um, again, I normally do not shoot with these on the camera, so um, all because of the headache situation. Unless I in dire need and I don't want to be carrying a big bunch of 
light equipment around with me, a stand, a modifier, then I will use the ring flash as a fill. Here we have this little umbrella bracket that comes with the system. <clears throat> this is good for holding small umbrellas. It is not going to hold this big para. There's, it's just not made for that. It's made for your average umbrella that's either uh, 43 inches and below. All you get with the unit, of course, is the two little mounting screws. Um, here we just take the system, we just set it on its face like this, line these little brackets up, take our little washers. What I found out is when I got the the system, the washers were not thick enough. So I had to actually put a lock washer on there uh, to make it so it held. Because what happened was it still slid around because it, the screws were longer than what um, it would mount. So again, we will just mount this to where we want it. And again, right now, I would take and leave these loose back here. And if I was going to mount my camera, I'm going to mount my camera on here like this. And I'm going to kind of slide it over there. And then I'm going to have my lens cap on my lens and I'm going to set that straight down onto the flat surface. This way your lens is completely lined up and you can actually move these up and down and line that to where the lens is even with the uh, ring flash itself. If you have a really long lens then it, you're going to have to extend a little bit past that. Um, but again after I find out with a long lens it actually throws a shadow. So you want, I would normally would use a fixed prime lens with this unit because this way I don't have to go in there and try zooming in, zooming out in this little short space that you get. It's better just that I can walk in, walk out, and focus. Um, what's nice about this unit, it does do high speed sync. It uh, will sync up to 10 thousandths of a second. Um, which is pretty incredible. Um, but normally on a, a flash tube this big, you're going to have a long flash duration because the tube is so big. On smaller tubes, you're going to get a lot faster flash duration. And it's also it's based on your uh, the capacitor on the inside as well. Again, this is the Godox AR400. My name is Scott with Sean's Photography, and thank you for watching. There was two things I forgot to mention in the video. One was recycling time, and the other one was uh, Kelvin color temperature shift. Here we're going to start out with the recycling time. Here we are at 128th power. Here's 164th. Here's 132nd. Here's 116th. Here's one eighth. Here's one quarter. Here's one half. And here's where the recycling time gets uh, becomes the longest is at full power. Right there, that's almost two point eight seconds long. I'm gonna fire it one more time and listen for the beat. Now I'm going to go back to half power and show you it's it's almost about a few seconds, just a few milliseconds off from recycling time. Um, what I noticed with this uh, system is if you fire rapidly, the color shift is non-consistent. It is all over the place. The thing is, is you should always let your uh, system fully charge up before you take your next shot. And if you're one of those rapid shooters, this might not be the setup for you. If uh, you're going down in power, there's some slight color shifts, but 
it's no different than what I used to use with Alien B and having the color shifts with them. So, I mean, once you learn the faults of that unit, uh, then you want to use those faults towards your advantage. So, I'm not um, bagging on any of the, the Calvin color temperature shifting on this unit, as well as Alien Bs. They have them, but once you learn them, you uh, learn to operate around those or situations or use them towards your advantage. Well, again, my name is Scott with Sean Photography. These were a few things I forgot to mention when I was shooting the video with the Godox AR400. It's a nice little compact unit. If it's something that you want in your camera bag, you want to use it for high fashion, or like me, use it as a large modifier filler for con even and consistent light, this is a little unit for you. Again, my name is Scott with Sean's Photography, and thank you for watching.